Today, we're in Canada, in the province of Alberta, 140 kilometers southwest of Calgary in Peter Lougheed Provincial Park. We're heading south on Highway 40 to Upper Kananaskis Lake. This region is part of Kananaskis country, a 4,200 square mile area of rolling hills, broad valleys, and glacier-capped mountains. The area is also full of wildlife, bighorn sheep like these on the roadway, moose, mule deer, white-tailed deer, elk, bear, and mountain goats. Also present, but hopefully less likely to be seen, are wolves, grizzly bears, and cougars. We're lucky, an early snowfall means the mountains look spectacular. Unfortunately, it's almost minus 10 Celsius, so even though we're excited to get painting, it's a bit too cold for the paint. We'll have to be satisfied with taking photos to use in the studio until the sun rises a bit further and warms everything up. In 1885, Sir John A. Macdonald designated parts of Kananaskis country to be included in Canada's first national park, the Rocky Mountain National Park now known as Banff. This area was removed from the park in 1911 and eventually turned over to the government of Alberta in 1930. But it wasn't until 1977 that it became a provincial park. Upper Kananaskis Lake is a natural lake that was turned into a reservoir. It's part of a series of natural and man-made lakes in the Kananaskis and Bow Valleys. They're used for hydroelectric power, flood control, and water reservoirs for Bow Valley water users, such as the city of Calgary. It's finally warm enough to paint, but because of the early flurries, the snow in the trails is too deep to hike. There's also been a grizzly sighted in the area, so we've decided to paint near the truck. It's turned out to be a beautiful day. Logging started here in 1883, mostly in the foothill valleys of the Elbow and Sheep Rivers. Coal was also mined in various sites, including Ribbon Creek by the Kananaskis Village, but never really on a large scale. Until recent times, the valley remained mostly uninhabited. In 1934, the Canadian government established the National Forestry Program under the supervision of the Department of Defense. The program was designed to provide work for unemployed single men during the Depression. The Kananaskis Forest Experimental Station was also founded. Though mostly conceived as a make-work project during the lean years of the 30s, the station delivered insights into forestry practice and influenced policies throughout Western Canada. In September 1939, the site was reclaimed by the Department of Defence. CB Kananaskis Internment Camp No. 130, a prison camp originally for civilians of German, Italian and Japanese descent, was opened on the north side of Mount Barrier. Two years later, the majority of these detainees were sent to facilities in eastern Canada, and the site was enlarged and fortified for use as a prisoner of war camp starting in 1942.
Nazi, as it was known to the locals, housed 650 prisoners of war, mostly German officers, captured in North Africa. During their time in detention, the prisoners engaged in numerous activities, including clearing the valley that now forms the bed of Barrier Lake. There were prisoners' huts, a store, dining hall, recreation hall, sports field, hospital, jailhouse, and mail sensor office, as well as an officer's mess hall headquarters, guard towers, and a drill yard. One building that still exists from the former camp is the Colonel's Cabin. Constructed in 1936 and originally used as the Forest Experimental Station, the cabin became the Commandant's quarters during the war. It's constructed of lodge pole pines joined by double-cut round saddle notching and features an impressive rundle rock fireplace and open beam log ceilings. It's one of the few remaining buildings in the province associated with the World War II internment camps. And so the cabin was designated a provincial historic resource in 1982. Thanks for watching. Click like and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.